hear a story from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be a scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So it was just over six years ago that I completed my last assignment in grad school, my last official assignment for a degree It was a a paper that I was really, really excited to be done with. I'd been putting it off until the end. And I I remember that feeling, though, all of that stress and that pressure. And then when you hit send and the paper goes off to the professor, it's like the world melts away and you can, like, be human again almost. I remember being so excited about being done with grad school, I actually got my last paper done early. I turned it in three whole hours before the deadline might tell you a little bit about the kind of student I was going through uh, college and then grad school. I, I was really good at procrastination. I think I got a master's level in at least that. And I would, I would put things off to the end, and I remember that sense of, of pressure when a deadline is coming and you're not sure if you're going to make it. You're working and working late into the night. And I don't think anybody likes that feeling. I don't think I was a very nice person to be around when the deadlines were getting closer. Um, My wife and I lived together my last year in grad school, and she can tell you if there was a paper due the next day, nobody wanted to be around me. It was no fun. And yet, I think, at least for me, I absolutely needed those deadlines in school. Otherwise, I'd have gotten maybe 10% of the amount of work done. Something about having that deadline drove me to do more than I ever thought I could, It might not have always been perfect or the best work, but I got a whole heck of a lot done because there was this looming sense that tomorrow was going to be too late, that it had to get done now. I think that sense of pressure and that idea of a deadline is is something that's working through Jesus' head as he's talking to his disciples and to the crowds. Jesus seems to be under a lot of pressure, and he's talking to his disciples, and he's basically telling them, This kingdom of God thing needs to get going right now. There's not time to wait. This is something that God needs done in the moment, even if you're not quite ready for it. You see, the thing about starting and and diving in, even when we're not quite ready, is it's a challenge to try and meet those intense deadlines. It can be hard. It can even be controversial at times. In the church, oftentimes, we we talk about the things that we're going to do in our community, and it can be pretty easy to talk about how in the future we're going to help people. If we put out a statement that says, in three years, Grace Lutheran Church is going to help more refugees and migrants in our country, I think people would be pretty okay with that. That seems like a good and easy thing. But if you switch it and say, tomorrow we're going to load up a truck and we're going to send it down to the border in Texas, all of a sudden, that same idea feels a little more controversial, a little more questions might arise out of those ideas. 
The same kind of thing can happen if we talk about homelessness. We all like to talk about uh, we need to have affordable and efficient housing for people who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. And then if you talk about building a brand new apartment complex in a rich suburb of Chicago to do exactly that, the conversation can shift. When there's a deadline and things start to become real and happening right now, it becomes trickier. And I think Jesus knew that. He talks about that in this story. He talks about even families being divided over different ideas or different ways of bringing in the kingdom of God into the world. But yet there's something about God's message to us that even if it's controversial, even if we're not sure which steps to take, there's still this sense of immediacy that something needs to begin right now, that what God is doing is about this present moment. Last week, I was in Milwaukee for a, a big uh, assembly for the whole Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA. Once every three years, there are representatives from nearly 9,000 churches that are a part of the ELCA all across America, and we gather together in one place to do kind of the business of the national church. And so we'll elect new presiding bishops or secretaries, we'll try and pass a budget, we'll also vote on these things we call social statements. These are statements that together as Lutherans in America, we are trying to affirm and say this is how we feel called to be God's church in the world today. Last week when I was there, one of those statements was about uh, migrants and refugees and immigrants in our country. And it had been worked on for a number of years, and it's this beautiful statement of support and care and talking about our biblical call to care for all people, for the strangers in our midst, for people regardless of their immigration status or what paperwork they have. It had been worked on and talked about and discussed, and, and finally we were getting ready to vote on this beautiful document, and there was overwhelming support. And just before the vote, somebody stood up and they said, I have an amendment I would like to make to this document. They stood up with this amendment and they said, I, all I want to do is at the very end of this beautiful statement we've all worked together so well on, is to put, and therefore, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America declares itself to be a sanctuary denomination. And I think if we're honest, in that room, there's probably nobody who could really tell you exactly what it means to be a sanctuary denomination. I'm still not sure I know that it can mean a different thing for each of the 9,000 different churches that are a part of the ELCA. And if we were all kind of in our, our you know, very orderly and, and prudent kind of thought processes, what we probably would have done is say, that's a wonderful amendment. Let's study that. Let's look at it. Let's figure out what it's going to mean for us in our church if we say that. And when we come back together in three years, we can bring that up for a vote. But something different happened in that room. I don't know quite how to describe it, but it was there's a sense of this thousand plus people gathered together that we knew that God was calling us to do something not in three years, but right now. That God was calling us to make a bold statement, even if we didn't know exactly what it might mean or what it might lead to, even if we weren't sure that everybody had the same consensus about doing it, even if we knew it might bring division in some places. We had this sense that God was calling us to act here and now and make this statement that says to the world that our church together cares about all people. And we're willing to step forward and be bold about that. And so in that room, after some debate and discussion, back and forth, people for it and against it, we eventually voted and voted overwhelmingly to accept and adopt that. And now today, the ELCA is the very first sanctuary denomination in the United States. We still have to figure out what that means. We're still not sure. For some churches, that might mean providing support and assistance for agencies that work with refugees and with migrants and with people who are undocumented. For other churches, it might just mean praying 
for these people who are coming through on our border, for people who are migrating from country to country who are escaping violence. For other churches, it might even mean opening up their space to house a family that's at risk of deportation or of being harassed. There's a lot to figure out. And there are plenty of people out there who disagree with the decision we made, but I really do feel that in that moment, God was calling us to make one of these bold statements that there was a deadline and we needed to act now. I think sometimes that's how God works in our lives. God calls us not when we're ready, not when we have all of the things figured out, not when we've done all of the studies, but when the world needs it and says it is time to step out and care for the people around you. Not tomorrow, not next year, but today, right now. This is what Jesus is talking about in this story. This is what God is calling us to do. To be the church. To be the people of God. Not when we're all ready. Not when we are all of one mind and have a complete consensus on how to do that or, or what it needs to look like. But right now. Because right now is when the world needs us. Right now is when the people on the fringes of our society need us to stand up and say, we are with you. And God is already there walking alongside you. This isn't easy. We're not always going to agree. Sometimes the things we choose to do in the moment that God calls us can send divisions down our own families, in our own congregations, in our own communities. But if you'll notice in that story, when Jesus talked about that family being divided, fathers against sons, daughters against mothers, at the end of the story, they were still a family. At the end of our decisions here together, we are still a church. Our community is still a community, even if we can't decide who to vote for or how to care for the world around us. God calls us to be bold. It's not easy. We're not always going to get it right, and we're not always going to agree. But every once in a while, every once in a while we find a way to make that bold step and we look around and we find ourselves doing more than we ever imagined we could do. We look around and we get a glimpse of God working right alongside us in the world. We see God working through our own hands, through our own feet, through our own voices. Every once in a while, we get a glimpse of what Jesus called the kingdom of God. And those moments change us forever. They send us back out into the world to do more, to go to places we never thought we could go, to meet people we might not even look at otherwise. Again and again and again, God transforms us in these moments. Not when we're ready, not when we have it all figured out, but right here and right now. God is calling us today. So what are we waiting for? Amen.